was in the gym late that night, um, really late. And I'm like, you know what? I'll watch the beginning of the game at the gym. I got my laptop. I'm doing work. And I see that they, the, the starting lineups came out and McDermott's in there, Rempy's in there. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Uh, smart, let's get this over with, you know, and play the game. I think that was the thinking on both coaches. And dude, we'll get to the details of this line brawl. All of a sudden, Amesy, I'm watching on my laptop. It's seven o'clock on the dot. I'm like, here we go. I've been waiting all day for this. And all of a sudden I get a client come into the office to talk to me. So I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. What's up, everybody? Talking Trash Podcast, back at it again. Amesy reporting live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Number 18, Amesy. Crazy to believe we're here. Number 18. 18, 18 deep. We got to go Stu Gibson. Who do, you, who do you wear 18 with, you said? Flames? Yeah, it's funny. It's funny. Yeah, he played with the Flames. I mean, Grimson kind of moved around a little, but you're right. You know, we you started this tradition with the episode number, and 18 is kind of a random number. So I think... I think Grimson definitely, uh, he deserves it. Max yeah. Domi actually wore, I think, 18 out when he was with the Flame, uh, excuse me, with the Stars a little bit. Derek, so Derek Armstrong, friend of mine, used to be my coach in, yes. uh, in Denver. He wore 18 when he played for the Rangers as well. All right, so yeah, we got three three worthy number 18s. And uh, hey, guys, real quick, before we get going, like and subscribe, YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts, leave a review. And uh, listen, again, Team, we are Team BioSteel, AMZ, okay? They are Team Talking Trash. BioSteel, remember the official drink of athletes, clean, healthy hydration. I got to tell you, I'm absolutely loving this cherry lime drink they they sent. And uh, that's probably my go-to is cherry, cherry lime. lime. I know you like You're a cherry what's, what's your flavor? You're a cherry I guy. do. I, I, a cherry I love guy. cherry. Yeah, I know. I, should, I, I'm still I wish on I was the more blue of a... Raz. I'm still on the blue raz. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I just... Clearly. I'm uh, definitely a cherry type of guy. I wish I was more of a cherry picker when I played hockey. I maybe put up some <laughs> points, some but points. Uh, but listen, guys, check, listen, 20% off. The link is in our description, but go to www.biosteel slash DB Trashers. It automatically um, calculates at the end the 20% off and uh, follow them on Instagram at Biosteel Sports. Uh, big shout out to Biosteel. They're definitely doing their thing. Got to go with the cherry lime. Ames, he's a blue Raz guy. But again, they got everything. Supplements, protein, the whole nine yards. So, uh, Ames, last episode, we had Brett Brochu on. Brochure. Got a lot of great... Got a lot of great feedback. Everyone loves him. A lot of people in Danbury are like, oh, man, he's he's awesome. Every you know, So, we definitely introduced him to a new market. Got, uh, and you've been telling me from day one since you got there. He definitely has a future ahead of him. So yeah. really happy to have, how, how did Bros like everything? How, was, how did he like coming on? It was fun. Yeah. We, I think we all had fun and uh, yeah, it was good to have him on, like have some, some young up and coming talent on the show. And uh, yeah, it was fun to have him a goalie too, which obviously we talked about for a little while there. We need to get a goalie on. Um, but yeah, I thought it was fun. And uh, you know, you got to put him on the hot plate there at the end. And uh, <laughs> yeah, it was good. It was fun so yeah, I want it. Too. I wanted to ask, how was the locker room when, you know, and, and again, guys, if you didn't catch this interview, go back. All of our episodes are on demand. Really, I really um, suggest you check out the Brett Brochu interview. I really, you know, this kid is going places, uh, Diamond Hands teammate. But at the end there, I, I was kind of lull lulling him to sleep. Um, you know, I thought we, we had a good rapport, all three of us. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait to the very end and hit him with this. I want him to think that he, he, uh, kind of got off easy in a way. And I asked him, essentially, if you had one player outside of Diamond Hands, which you've had success on him, you could pick one player on your Fort Wayne Comets team to take a shootout against. And if you save the puck, you're going right to the NHL. He picked Jack Gorniak. And I got to ask, how was the room after that episode <laughs> aired? I'm sure he was happy. I told Broch, I was like, you're going to have to break it to him like before that gets online. You got to go talk to you. Be like, hey, just so you know, I kind of sewered you, you know? And he didn't. I went up, I went up to Gorns. I said, hey, you talked to Broch? You bro talked to Broch today? And Gorniak says, no, why? And then I was like, oh, I, th I think you should go talk to Broch. <laughs> he's like, oh, no. And uh, he came back and he's like, wow. He threw me under the bus, <laughs> eh? And uh, I think Broch partly decided to choose Gorniak because he knew he'd handle it well. And it was fun in the room because it kind of created a little 
a little battle. Gorniak was going after him all practice long, and uh, there's a little battle, ongoing battle now between Broch and Gorns. I think Bor- I, I don't blame Gorniak for having a little chip on his shoulder after that, uh, you know? Well, I, I, when we put that when we put that clip out, so many, especially Fort Wayne Comet fans, were just dying laughing. They love seeing that side of Broch, yeah. and uh, everybody knows he's he's actually one fan told me they call him Baby Broch because he's so young. He's I forget young, how man. young he is, yeah. and uh, he's going places. Guys, make sure you follow Brett Broch. He's a friend of the show. Definitely would have been a Danbury Trasher. And uh, shout out to Jack Gorniak. We yeah, probably Gorniak, should start. I don't, I don't know. Like you've watched enough games, you've seen Gorniak. Gorniak. I still think Gorni- Jack Gorniak is the fastest hockey player on the planet. I you swear, said I, that. I'm, I'm not, I'm, and I'm not just saying that. Like, I'm not like, yeah, this guy's on my team. I swear, this guy's the fastest guy I've ever seen. And that's why Broch said he chose it. He's like, well, he gets five breakaways a game. You know, that's what he said. He's like, oh, he gets five breakaways a game, which is he gets a lot of breakaways. Like, Jack is so fast. And I don't know. I, I think he was a football player. He was like a running back or something. Really? Yeah, and he's he can boogie. So uh, shout out to Jack Gorniak, the fastest hockey player on the planet. Yeah, I remember when you first got there, you told me about him. So shout out to Jack Gorniak. We should probably keep statistics now from here to the end of the season. Who's getting the better of who? Because uh, that definitely was a was a funny clip last yeah. week. Speaking of the Fort Wayne Comets, again, we are recording. You guys had a great weekend last weekend. This race in the Western Conference, okay, it is so crazy. And actually, what the, the crazy thing about the, the race in the coast is uh, when this episode airs, we're pretty much going to know where you guys stand with the playoffs. And you guys, we've talked about it week after week. You guys have gotten hot at the right time. And you guys had a good weekend last weekend. And, uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about it. Um, big, big interconference wins. And things are looking up right now. Yeah, so like like we said, we're, it's coming out on Sunday. So w- by Sunday, we're going to know. By the time this episode comes out, we'll know exactly where we're at, where we stand. That'll be the end of the season. Um, our last game is on Sunday. And, uh, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's um, – we, you know, we didn't make it easy for ourselves, you know. But, um, like, I, I've been saying it, I'm always on the positive side of everything. And I think that, you know, we always play better with our back against the wall. And I think, you know, the situation we kind of put ourselves in, it's not terrible for, you know – getting us in playoff mode a little early and kind of just, you know, we get the ball rolling now right into playoffs. Then, you know, I think we're, we're in a good spot. Um, You know, I believe in our team. I know everybody else in the room believes in our team. Our coaches believe in us. Um, I'm sure the fans believe in us. Like we got, we got what we need. We just need, all we need to do is just play the game the way we can play the game. When we are at our best, I don't think there's any team in the league that can beat us. Well, I've been saying it, man. I, I sound like a broken record. I would not if I'm if I'm another team in the Eastern Conference, Eastern Conference in the East Coast Hockey League. I'm telling you, I do not want to see the Fort Wayne Comets, Comets, uh, in any sort of round, especially yeah. the first round. You guys are bubbling right now, and um, hey, we've talked about it. You guys are a deep team and made for the playoffs. So I'm really excited. I think. When this airs, we're gonna all be in a super happy mood because I think you guys are gonna, I think you guys are gonna get in there and and uh, really excited to see it. And uh, yeah, man, what else is going on? How's everything at home? How's the it's kids? Good. How's everything going, yeah, man? It's good. Yeah, just uh, like I say, just waiting on uh, waiting on the playoffs to start, and you know, like we're in a little battle here. I'm still in the IR for till Sunday. I'll be back on Sunday. So when this comes out, I'll be hopefully in the lineup and um, getting ready for playoffs. So. Um, yeah, man, everything's good. How are you? Eh, hey, you know, same stuff, man. It's just been a, it's been a grind. I mean, you and I talk, and and you know, we're both pretty private. You know, we don't really talk too much, but uh, you know, especially publicly about yeah. things. It's just been a grind, man. I've been, I've been in. You know how I get. I, yeah. we've always talked about the peaks and valleys of life. Sports is the same thing, and it's just been a grind, man. Stuff with my mom. Stuff with. Uh, I don't know, man. It's like the way, I mean, out here, man, I don't know what it is. The weather's changing and and people you'd think would be in a better mood. It's getting a little nicer out. And man, you know how it is on the East Coast, man. It has been a grind over here, but you know how it is, man. Um, Hey, listen, any mini sticks games been going on over there? Has Brose returned to the house to play with you against Wes? And how's that going? Brose just got a puppy, actually. So he's got his hands full. But, uh, oh god! <laughs> yeah, but um, no, yeah, of course. There's always mini six going on. It's always, a, always so, going dude. On. I, I was looking online. I don't know, and I swear, bro, these phones are listening to us. Obviously, but I swear, like you know, 
I was thinking the other day, I don't know what made me think of, I was talking to a buddy and I said something, you know, obviously I'm sure you remember bubble hockey, you know, you remember the games, you know, bubble hockey and the arcades and uh, dude, I want a bubble hockey machine, I guess you would call it. Or I, dude, you remember like, I remember Super Checker, it used to be called or something. Dude, I used to love playing bubble hockey, bro. And I need to, I, I'm like, dude, could you imagine a tournament with bubble? Did you ever play bubble hockey yeah, growing up? We had it at my cousin's house actually. And uh, like a real, like the real deal. You know what I mean? Like not just like the <laughs> crappy cheap ones. I'm talking like the arcade one at my cousin's house. So and Amazing. Then, uh, when we were young, like we'd always go over there. They'd always have like parties or whatever for like. It was actually not like my blood relatives, but it was like my dad's like best one of my dad's best buddies, and like they'd all go over there and they have a party. All the parents would be upstairs, and and all the kids would be downstairs. We'd be ripping bubble hockey and watching the old school big screen TVs. Remember those, remember those <laughs> giant big screens back in the day? And they were like, you would need like you need like a. <laughs> You'd need a crane to yeah, bring those yeah, in. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you need like a whole army of guys. You need to call the boys over, get a case of beer. Hey, you guys got to help me move this TV into the basement here. But I, Dude. Yeah, I remember like it was yesterday when you played bubble hockey and I remember watching Twister for my first time. Wow, and Twister. I, I remember like it was yesterday watching Twister on that big screen. I thought I was like in in the storm, you know? I thought... Dude, those old school, it's so funny, man. If you look back, especially in the 90s, those big TVs, if you had one of those, you were doing it in You're life. Big dog, I remember yeah. we had one too. We never had a bubble hockey. Uh, we never had bubble hockey in the house, but we did have air hockey. Yeah. Air hockey air is so overrated to though. me. I like air, air hockey. Air hockey's. Uh, air hockey always ends up with somebody taking the puck to the hand yeah. and they start crying like a little girl. Uh, <laughs> so not, not, I guess it's just not for everyone. Yeah, nah, but listen, I need to get, I think we need to get a super checker bubble hockey machine. I, I don't yeah. know why I, I, I was talking about it with a buddy and then all of a sudden I start getting all these ads course, yeah. for bubble hockey. They're not cheap, by the way. No, the bubble expensive. hockey is not cheap. So, uh, yeah, the real ones. I used to have like the, I had like this one actually, it was kind of cool. I got it for Christmas one year and it was like, it wasn't like crazy big. It was small, but like you'd actually like push a button in and it would like make the guy take a little slap shot. And it was kind of yes, sweet. It, and my dad made like a bubble for it. Like he went and got bought. I don't know where he got it, but my dad built this like dome table for it. So he like made me like my own little, it wasn't like the big fancy thing, but he made me like a little bubble hockey version of it. It's kind of sweet. Dude, I swear there used to be, I swear there used to be a, um, a bubble hockey like machine, like you said, that actually you could actually lift the puck. Yeah, you know what, what I mean? That's like, what mine was like. You push the button in it. Like literally you could rip it like top shelf. Dude, cool. at big shout out to Bubble Hockey. I, I could see us having some fun with that, bro. Yeah, but uh, listen, hey, I got to give a huge shout out. I guess he's part of the team now, man. Um, I don't know if you ever met him. There's a young boy that uh, comes to our gym, man. His name is Caillou, and uh, he's actually an autistic um, content creator. He yeah. comes to the gym once a week, really friendly with his his family, great people. This kid is a riot, man. He actually had his uh, podcast premiere at the gym. And uh, we had a we had a really good time. So I'm gonna put a link I in the description. You guys gotta make sure you I follow have up. Met him. I've seen him at the gym for sure before, but uh, yeah, I seen that he had his little he had a little party over there. That was awesome. Oh uh, man, great people. Big shout out to Caillou. That's that's my guy, man. Caillou is um one of those kids. He he's a special special kid. And uh, big shout out to him. We gotta have him on the pod. I would love to see him review some hockey fights, man. I think right. that would be pretty funny to watch him. But uh, listen, man. Um, Damn, world of hockey. We we have a lot going on right now. There's a lot to catch and, up on, I feel like. Dude, and we really have to, I think we really have to um, do our playoff bracket soon. It's coming up. It's going to be tricky with recording, but we definitely got to put our predictions out there. It's, uh, I'm really sick to my stomach to kind of say who I think's coming out of the East and uh, I, I don't know, man. What, <laughs> I what, I know, I'm like, I think I know who you're going to say. I'm, abs- I'm absolutely sick. Over who I think is coming out of the East, hey, but again, at least, I don't want- at least your fantasy goalie is a part of the a part of it. Listen, you want to talk about being sick? <laughs> Listen, I was on a run towards the end of the year in our fantasy hockey. In our fantasy hockey, you know, you got me into fantasy hockey. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. And we got into fantasy hockey, dude. You got me into it, and um, I was on such a roll the past few weeks, okay? I think I won 10, 11 games. I was really doing big things. All of a sudden, 
Um, I didn't realize, you know, obviously we're coming to the end of the season. I didn't realize, I, I end up getting uh, McKittrick, okay? My boy McKittrick, yeah. the Edmonton Eskimos. And I swear to God, we were battling for two weeks straight. Now we're at the point where you're battling for two weeks for playoff spots, this and that. I didn't even realize it, man. I made one mistake one day where I forgot to put Dylan Larkin in, and I ended up losing to this man by a by 1.8 points. And Larkin had and he's And he's in the finals against, I think, um, Gonzo. And I am sick. I saw McKittrick at the junior hat tricks game, and I was like, I can't believe I'm sick to my <laughs> stomach, man. Nice. But, uh... But yeah, I'm battling. I'm ba I'm battling Koozie now for third place finish. Oh, uh, hey, I'm gonna battle it to the end, man. There you go. Great, but man. Uh, listen, we gotta definitely do our playoff bracket soon. And uh, so yeah, man, I gotta tell. Who do you think's coming out of the East then? I I I. This is all unofficial. Okay, we're gonna put our official brackets out, but I, I don't know, man. I I hate to say New York looks strong. I yeah. I absolutely hate to say it. <laughs> that's why I, I wanted I, you to say it. It, I knew it that's just, what you're thinking. Shesterkin, dude, their goal is sick goalie combo. Sick goalie combo. Shesterkin and They Quirk. just, you know, we talk about what wins, right, in playoff hockey. And, dude, they got four lines. They got great defense. And I got to tell you, again, when we do this podcast, Ames, one thing I think people like about us is we're authentic. We call it how it is. I, I never I never say what I, what I want to, you know, I got to keep it real. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm not going to just be biased. I got to tell you why I think the Rangers are going places. This is all unofficial, by the way. We'll do our official bracket soon. A lot can change. Um, last Wednesday, April 3rd, okay, the game with my Devils, okay, and we'll talk about this because this is a lead up to this. I know you you kind of spoke with uh, Matt Rempe, our boy, a little bit before yeah. the game. Um, we're going to get into kind of the crust of, you know, the crust of this, I mean, uh, a 5v5 line brawl to kick off the game last Wednesday, April 3rd, against the Devils in Master Square Garden. This is what I think is going to take the Rangers to the next level. You know how it is when the camaraderie with the boys, and um, I just have a feeling this is going to carry them. That's one of those situations that can really carry a team and bring a locker room closer together. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, 100%. That's, that's great timing, you know, like. Like, I mean, I think, I don't know if it was him that said it, but someone mentioned that, you know, that is, it is great for team bonding, stuff like that, you know, brings everybody together. You know, all, you got five guys that were willing to fight, you know, and, and those guys all fought for each other and they fought for everybody in the, in their, in their team's colors and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's, that's good for, for everyone involved. And I, I love to see it, you know, love to see it. Rempe's been stirring things up a lot. Uh, in the whole in the game of hockey in general, um, I feel like he's kind of woken some guys up around the league too. Um, love to see it, man. Love to see it. And well, listen, well, well, listen. This was definitely one of the better line brawls. I mean, maybe the best brawl we saw all season in the NHL. Definitely, yeah, um, definitely all season because uh, you don't have you don't really see that much anymore. And, and honestly, I mean, let's let's kind of get into how this whole thing started again. Matt Rempe gets called up. He's you know, kind of beginning a, of the year. It's a little bit of a devil killer this year. Said, well, we'll get to that. I don't. I I hate that I even you look. I got to be responsible <laughs> and put out all the facts, which I hate. But you know, we all love Matt Rempe. There's there's no two ways about it. But you know, long story short, Matt Rempe. You know, he gets called up. We all know it was Rempe rampage mania. You know, especially oh, yeah. around here. And um, listen, the first game against the Devils, he absolutely takes out Nate Bastian. Crazy yeah. hit. Yeah. Um, gets thrown out of the game. Subsequently, the next day, I think, or the next few next days, the Devils go out. Yeah. I, well, well, after the hit on Bastion, you know, they go out, the Devils, and they get Curtis McDermott, I think from Colorado, who's, you know, not as active, but yeah. very tough. Well, he's got to be grateful. Like, he's got to be grateful that Rampe's mixing things up because he's creating some job. You know, he's creating jobs he, for guys like that because – you know, put some value dude, on on a guy like that. You know, so it's dude, one one thousand percent. So the Devils after after Remp the first time the Devils play Rempe, he comes in within the first few minutes, takes out Nate Bassey, and they go get McDermott. So then fast forward to the next time the Devils and Rangers play, it was I believe it was in New Jersey, and everybody was predicting, okay, we're gonna get McDermott and Rempe. Rempe's gonna have to answer for the hit on Bastian. We don't get the fight right away. I mean, meanwhile, this this poor kid Rempe, I don't want to say poor kid, but this kid Rempe's fighting every other day. He's fighting the toughest of the tough. So he doesn't fight right away, but he ends up later. You know, McDermott is challenging him. Rempe won't drop him. Um, 
Then he takes out uh, Jonas Siegenthaler on the Devils. Absolutely yeah. destroys this man. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. gets kicked out of the game again. Um, the Devils, the fans are hot. You know, he takes out another Devil. And it's just like, oh, my God. And we look at the calendar, you know, that same night, and we say, okay, they play once more, April 3rd. It's a Wednesday night. Everybody know there's some fireworks coming that game. Listen, can you – could you have drawn this up any better? I don't okay? think – I don't think – like, I, I think everybody knew the fight was happening. Like, everyone knew. Like, I was – I remember I was rushing home to try and get it on in time, and I actually didn't, unfortunately. But I don't think anybody <laughs> expected that. I don't know. Well, listen – Listen, I'm going to tell you how it worked out for me. So the day that Rempe took out Siegenthaler, I'm like, oh, man, this guy is this guy's a nut. And I'm like, do they play the Devils again? And sure enough, April 3rd, it was a Wednesday night game. So talk about talk about things written, okay? A nationally televised game. I believe it was on TNT, okay? Nationally televised rivalry night, Devils-Rangers, the last time they're going to play this year. Um yeah, that day we had talked, you and me. You know, we we actually filmed earlier that day, and I remember you telling me like, "Yeah, I think um, Rempy's gonna give it a go tonight." And uh, I remember you you even said you might have um, spoke with him a little bit, gave him some pointers. Um, was that the same day? I feel like it was the yeah, same day I you had spoken to him. To, I hated to message him on a game day, but yeah, I messaged him earlier before the game, and just I told him what I seen um, with McDermott or whatever, kind of just a few things I noticed or whatever to just watch for and, and things he could do but um you know I, I dude everything he's done has been great and that's how you learn i i i get i actually get annoyed when i see people online because you see so many keyboard warriors chirping him like oh this guy needs to learn how to fight this and that it's like how do you yeah, expect sure. how do you expect him to learn how to fight like <laughs> how did you the keyboard Stupid. warrior how did you learn how to fight because i'll tell yeah. you how i learned i did exactly what matt rempe did i went through the fucking gauntlet like everybody else does so it's like that's Dude. the only way to learn, and that's how, you know, and that's what he's doing, and he's getting better. And granted, yeah, you can do stuff outside of the game. You can box. You can do all this stuff. But the guys in the NHL, they're playing a game every other day almost, you know? Like he doesn't have a ton of time, but right now that's how you're going to learn. You go through the gauntlet, and you just nut up and do it. And that's what he's doing. I respect it. And uh, D all you keyboard warriors can kick rocks. Yeah, no, 100%. And again, the kid is 21 years old, okay? I don't think people truly understand. Like, the, you know, you yourself is another example. These guys aren't robots, okay? They're real people. Um, he's dealing with the pressure, the emotion. He made such a name for himself early on. Now he's getting challenged everywhere he goes, rightfully so. Yeah. And, I mean, this kid has answered the bell, answered the call every single time. So, anyway, we get to April 3rd. Um, I remember two. I was in the gym late that night, um, really late. And I'm like, you know what? I'll watch the beginning of the game at the gym. I got my laptop. I'm doing work. And I see that they, the the starting lineups came out and McDermott's in there, Rempe's in there. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Yeah. Uh, smart. Let's get this over with, you know, and play the game. I think that was the thinking on both coaches. And, dude, <laughs> we'll get to the details of this line brawl. All of a sudden, Amesy, I'm watching on my laptop. It's seven o'clock on the dot. I'm like, here we go. I've been waiting all day for this. And all of a sudden I get a client come into the office to oh, talk no. to me. So yeah. I'm like, you gotta be kidding Sorry, me. So close. I So the dude, door. the gym was packed. I'm talking to this client. I'm watching. I ended up pausing it, thankfully, and uh rewinding it and watching it. But long story short, like you said, you you hit it on the head, man. Um, I don't think anybody Anybody was expecting a five v five brawl. Yeah. Okay. No, I definitely. So wasn't. we drop we dropped the puck and two seconds in. Let me bring it up here inside. Um, dude, we had uh, Kevin Ball, Jimmy VC, Jacob Truba, Chris Tierney, Matt Rempe. Um, you know, obviously Curtis McDermott, Keandre Miller, um, Barclay Goodrow, Curtis Lazar. I mean, John Martino. I mean, five v five. I mean, nobody. Shesterkin and dropped I, his blocker. Shesterkin dude, was so, ready to get in on the action. He wanted it. So, Shes so Shesterkin's got a little bit of a bite to him. He's yeah. got a little Brett Brochu in him. And I, I I saw that, and I'm like, no way. Yeah, no way this that. is happening. <laughs> so, so, listen, I mean, I don't even think the cameramen were ready for it. Yeah. Because they were like, where do we go? I mean, yeah. everyone was focused. You need I mean, a the wide main angle, I feel like. I don't know if they have it, but you need to have everybody in the one shot. It's the only way. Imagine being stressed as a cameraman. They they're telling you, you record. 
Like you got five yeah, they, fights going on. And you know these cameramen, they get it in their ear like, hey, stick on Rempe and McDermott. That's yeah. the main event. And yeah. and you could kind of see the camera all over the place. It yeah. was crazy. I wish Absolute. they would do like a picture in picture and have like yeah. Rempe McDermott in the big screen. And then in every corner, each corner, you yes. have a fight. And that would be all five at the same time. That'd be sick. Dude, to <laughs> center, I, listen, Wednesday night, primetime, yeah. national TV, Love Devils it. Rangers, one of the best rivalries in the NHL, center ice at Madison Square Garden. It doesn't get any better than that. Um, again, it was kind of hard to to kind of evaluate these fights because there was so much going on. Yeah. And uh, listen, uh, Rempe answered the bell. I mean, I think we all know he had to. And, um, you know, even after the game, McDermott said, hey, I respect the kid. He answered. And, um, you know, it was it was good to see. Yeah. But, I, I mean, crazy stats. Within the first five minutes of that game, okay, um, there was over 156 penalty minutes. You absolutely love to see it. I love, um, to, love to see it. But you know what I hate to see? I hate to see eight guys get kicked out. I hate to see yeah. that. That's what I hate. And, like, those penalty minutes are all 10-minute majors because they all got 10s. But I hate the second fight rule. I get it. I, me I get too. why they do it, but it's like, hey, man, like let the kids play. Like these guys got to handle business. Let them handle business. It sucks that you lose eight guys out of the game. Each team loses four guys for the rest of the game. You know that stuff's gonna happen. So what happens if there's a fight going on and somebody goes after my goal scorer in a, in a scrum? And now you're supposed to sit there. Now I'm just gonna either watch it or I'm getting kicked out. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not a huge fan of that rule, but it is what it is. Um, but love, yeah. to, love to see it. Love to see all the boys stepping up. Um, that was awesome, man. It gets everybody fired up. And I feel like, you know, I, I would love to see the ratings of hockey right now. They got to be well, going up. They got to be going up. I, so, so this brings me to my next point about this Devil Ranger, you know, on April 3rd. The hypocrisy of the NHL and and... and Listen, I'm not coming down the NHL. I'm not looking to talk bad about the NHL, but I think just hockey hypocrisy. Let's just call it hockey hypocrisy, right? Dude, the TNT pregame broadcast, national TV, okay? This is this is national broadcast. All they're talking about is Rempe and McDermott, okay? It was like it was like a pay-per-view fight. Yeah. And you know, th- we all know hockey, they're trying to do a way, you know, in their own ways and but dude, that's all you saw on all the social yeah. networks. You know, they were all posting this brawl. They loved it. It's they huge, absolutely loved it. It's huge, huge, huge for marketing at every level. And, like, I I don't know. I, there's there's rule changes that they've made over the years to try and get rid of the fighting. And at the end of the day, you're never going to get rid of it. Um, I think they should just embrace it like they used to and just let it happen, man. Like, the guys are going to do it. The guys are going to fight. Get rid of the 10-fight rule in the AHL. Get rid of the 10-fight rule in the ECHL. I think that that rule needs to be, you know, there's no point in it. It doesn't really do anything other than handcuff guys in in situations where they want to protect somebody or stand up for their teammates. But um, at the end of the day, man, I think they just need to embrace it. It's it's great for marketing. It's great for ratings. We all know that they want to make money. So why not just embrace it? It's going to happen no matter what. That's what I think. Yeah, I, I mean, like you said, man, I got more messages on, you know, on April 3rd. So many people. Did you see it? Did you see it? Did you see it? People absolutely love it. Listen, you know, I've been thinking about it and we talk about all the time, like, how do you keep fighting in the game? I mean, listen, I'm not totally against the max fight rule. I just think 10 is too low. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like I'm not, I, mean, I get it, it, man. The thing is, guy, like, what, what do you, what do you make it? Like, it's like at the end of the day, yeah, okay, you can make yeah. it like 15 or, or 20, whatever it is. But I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, what is that really doing? I guess you're yeah. going to say... It's gonna get rid of a guy that's just there to fight, right, guys? But it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't I get, do that. Nah, it doesn't do that regardless. No. So, um, I, I, you know, I, you know I, I see more and more now, and maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but I think since we've seen the limiting on fighting, you're seeing a lot more with the sticks, man. High sticks, oh, yeah. slashing. I mean, you're seeing a lot of that now because guys are like, hey, I can't fight, so I might as well just tomahawk you in the you know yeah. in the in the head you know what i mean so I actually i'm not sure if it's five i don't know if it's five minute like if it's just majors or if it's fighting majors i'm not i'm not totally sure because like if you're at nine fights would you just cross check a guy in the face instead is that better yeah so <laughs> i you know you're right I mean? it i don't know i just think this is going to be an endless debate I, I don't know man it's it's uh it's tough man but that brawl was, was unreal and i have to see it 
And let's talk about Matt Rempe. You you want to talk about a statistic? Okay. His career, and you kind of hinted at it before, three games against the Devils, okay? <laughs> His career against the Devils, three games, five minutes and three seconds total time on the ice. He's got 47 penalty minutes and three ejections, yeah. and he took out two guys. <laughs> He's three for three on ejections against uh, New Jersey. In my soul, I love it. In my soul, in my soul, I love it. But my heart, I, I hate it because yeah, he's a ranger. You're torn. Devils. I, I knew you'd be as soon as this guy played his first game, I knew that you were gonna be torn about it. I, I just been I've been sick to death over it because I just I want a Rempy jersey so bad, but I will never <laughs> wear a Ranger jersey. Uh, I even debated I even debated get a getting a hard jersey. Yes, maybe we'll look into that because I cannot, for the life of me, I refuse. And listen, Devils, if you're listening to the Talk of Trash podcast, do what you got to do to get Matt Rempe away from the Rangers because <laughs> that is my guy. Uh, big shout out to Matt Rempe. I don't Rempe. think the Rangers and, are going to let that guy go. After, no, his, after never. what he's done, he's probably made a career out uh, of being a Ranger. Well, listen, you know, we talked about it a little bit after that brawl, okay? we you You actually brought up to me. You know, some of the, you know, what are some of the best brawls? And listen, guys, if you're listening, leave in the comments your favorite line brawl or just brawl overall in hockey. It doesn't have to necessarily be in the NHL. And I got to tell you, the line brawl from April 3rd kind of reminded me, do you remember the um, opening opening face-off line brawl, the 3v3 Devils Rangers? You had Cam Jansen. Um, this was, God, I think yeah. it was Cam Jansen. Cam Jansen is Eric- such a beast, man. Oh man, was, I we got to get him on the pod. Beast. He was literally like Jansen was like he he would go into the he would be a marathon guy too. He wants that fight to go for as long as possible. Uh, he's Dude, an, he, I love Cam Jansen's fights, man. Cam, Cam Jansen is an absolute and and he's a listen. He's got a tractor jersey actually. He yeah, I right. love Cam Jansen. Yeah. That that's my guy. What's his um, part? He's got yeah. a pod, Cam and Strick podcast, right? Yeah, Shout out great Cam guys. And Strick. Good podcast. Yeah, great guys. Yeah. But listen, you know we're talking back in. Um, March of 2012, it was a, a 3v3. We had, for the Devils, Ryan right. Carter, Cam Jansen, and, and Eric Bolton, who's a very underrated tough yeah, guy. Bolton's tough and then the, the Rangers, they, they had Stu Bickle, Brandon Pruss, and then our boy, ex-trasher, Michael Rupp. That's sick. Um, That's that was, six legit like, tough cats. You know what I mean? Oh, man. That was, a, that was at the time in 2012. That was a big-time... Uh, you know, both teams were hot, and that was some. That was another one. I feel like was at MSG. Who else, another. Who did, who did Vancouver play? Do you remember the Vancouver one? Was it Vancouver Calgary? Or was it Vancouver and uh, Ah? You're right. Was it Cal? I think it was Calgary. Was it? And Torch went into the locker right? room. Yeah, Torch went into the locker room. Remember? Yeah. He, uh, <laughs> they fought. Almost fought in the hallway. Dude, you know, it's just like you said. It, it just brings such a boost to things, man. And also, um. And you hit it on the head. How about 1997 in, in March, the infamous Red Wings and Avalanche? Yeah. Claude Lemieux got his his get back after taking out Chris Draper the year before. Everyone knew that um, was coming. That was all over the papers too. Um, yeah, shout out to uh, to all those guys, man. Like that was for me. I mean, that was kind of what year was that? Did you have Did you have the year for that? 90, 97. Yeah, March so I, of, March of nineteen ninety seven. So I remember when I was a kid, like those. I just specifically remember the era, those that era of hockey, and just the it was always Red Wings, and it was always the Avalanche. They were just like the sickest teams back then. Um, my best friend was a huge Avs guy, loved the Avs, and I just remember. Just I remember that brawl happening, and it just I don't know if that 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 brawl potentially could have been what created Diamond Hands. I don't know because well, like for me seeing that, I was like, this is the. I just remember getting so fired up about it, and I'm sure that was part of uh, my my early programming to get me to to want to do what I do. Because uh, man, that got me fired up. Patrick Walk coming out hot. Uh, who do you run into full speed? Was it uh, Shanahan? Sh- Shanahan, Shanahan, right? Shanahan, Shanahan, for as good as he was, was tough. He was a heavy, like he fought everybody. Like he didn't care. He didn't so, care who you were. That so so. Listen, 1997. You were what? Seven, seven years, years old? old? Six, yeah. seven, seven. That yeah. so the Red Wings Avalanche brawl of 97 is what could have been the origin story for Diamond Hands Daniel Amesbury. I know for a fact. Like I remember watching it, and I remember like just jumping up and down while I was watching it. And uh, yeah, I'm sure that had something to do with it. That, and then, you know, me and my dad would always take me to the junior games, to the Ridge Meadows Flames games 
uh, when I was a kid too. And there was, you know, three fights a game, four fights a game back then. Um, but yeah, those are the, those are the heydays back then, man. I think I'm almost positive. I think it's ESPN plus or one of their 30 for 30. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's really they got good. a doc. They got a documentary. You talk about, um, you know, you talk about mending a bridge. They brought, um, Darren McCarty and Claude Lemieux together yeah. to kind of narrate what a awesome documentary. Um, you guys got to check it out. That, like you said, that's one of the most infamous brawls in history of, of sports. Yeah. Let alone um, well, Darren McCarty. You know, was let just, alone just here a couple weeks ago. Darren McCarty was at one of our games. He was doing like a book signing, and I was kind of bummed out. I missed him. I, I should have gone out before the game to see him. I just for whatever reason thought I would run into him after. I don't know. But uh, I didn't end up running into him, but I did talk to him a little bit through text message. Um, obviously, got, I got hooked up with uh, the Parkers, Scott Parker and Francesca cool. and and, uh, and DJ or whatever. So we ended up in a group chat. And uh, yeah, man, uh, McCarty, he was the one who went after Lemieux. And uh, man, well, that would be that's uh, he, that would be a great story to get on the pod, too. And uh, that 30 for 30 is awesome. The, the, the I'll whole tell story. you what, could you could you imagine in 97 that Red Wings uh, avalanche brawl. If our boy Scotty Parker was on oh, the ice for the avalanche oh at that time, God, man. Yeah, that you talk problem. about, would have been a you, you talk McCarty, about, <laughs> yeah, you talk about putting dynamite into a situation. Oh, yeah. Could you have imagined that? And, and honestly, I think Scott Parker kind of got brought into the Colorado fold, you know, during those days. I want to say, right. I, I could have the timeline you know screwed up, Scott but, uh, Parker was drafted in the first round. I did not know that. Yeah. Those Rightfully the, so. Yeah, hundred percent. Like I man, I remember seeing that. It wasn't that long that I seen that and I'm like, man, like that's so cool that that was like a thing back then. They're like, no, like we're gonna use our first round pick for the toughest guy in the league. That's the move. Oh man. I, I Scotty love Par that. Scott Parker is an absolute moose, man. And I, I mean, I couldn't imagine <laughs> getting into it. Even with him now, could you imagine in his heyday? That would have been some pretty scary stuff. I mean, oh, looking maybe, at old right, brawls. Maybe I'm correcting myself. It says he's dra initially drafted in the third round. And then, no, he, yeah, he was. And then, so he was, he was drafted twice. So the first time he was drafted by New Jersey Devils in 1996 NHL entry draft. Uh, but wasn't able to come to an agreement, and then he entered the '98 draft and was uh, 20th overall to the Avs, first rounder. That why, why, Devils? Why can't we just? Sign why it? don't we ever have that marquee guy? It's pissing me off. Yeah. So if I, ah oh, man, so he could have been. He could have been. Well, he wouldn't have been there. But I mean, uh, shit. He was. So he would have been in Kelowna still, I think, in '97. Yeah, Kelowna Rockets. So '97. I want to get '97, '98. He was still in Kelowna. I want to get a Scott Parker Kelowna Rockets jersey because oh, yeah. the Kelowna Rockets have a fire jersey. Yeah. I, I I'm friends with their mascot on Instagram. You gotta come up, so I'm you like, gotta come to BC this summer, eh? Yeah, I gotta figure it out, you man. Come to BC uh, this summer. But listen, and speaking of infamous brawls, okay, do you remember the one in 2004 between the Ottawa Senators and the Philadelphia Flyers? That was another underrated yeah. brawl. I was researching today. Uh, I think Donald Brashear was just going crazy <laughs> that, that game. And, but you know what I noticed in, 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 in researching a lot of these brawls? A lot of them are in March, the springtime, right? Yeah. The end of the what regular the, season. The, uh, all the feuds have kind of built up over the season. You're yeah. To, getting ready for playoffs. <laughs> Tensions are high. Um, Dude, yeah, everybody's like, I, okay, we got one one game left against this team to settle the score. That's always the thing. It's always the last game. I feel like it's like this is our last game to square up with these guys. Let's just kill everybody. Well, listen, I was really researching a lot. And guys, if you're watching, please drop us a comment. Um, I think me and Amesy should start reviewing a lot of these brawls, and maybe we'll do that. But guys, send us your favorite hockey brawl. And how could I forget? Brad Wingfield in 2005 at the Danbury Ice Arena against Kalamazoo. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many great brawls, man. What and about, you guys got to leave us. Did you see the one just recently with the, I know we've talked about it Pareto before, but there was another one in the uh, FDNY and the NYPD oh, game the other day. And the goalie, the goalie scrapped. Did you see Listen, that one? That one was unreal. Like the the FDN the 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 FDNY hockey team is not to be played around with. Yeah. They got some dogs, and our boy <laughs> Peretta, obviously, I mean, he had an absolute barn burner last year at the USB Arena. Uh, you know, felt like a million people were chanting his name. I mean, there was, and, and we got to put the link. I mean, there was a great 
great line, bro. I think there was a team in Long Beach that they were playing. I, I'll stand corrected if I'm wrong. And there was some line brawl. And I got to tell you, man, it was very one-sided. Usually yeah. line brawls, you know, it could be 50-50. Listen, it was not pretty. They were, let me use some pun here, they were putting out the fire. This <laughs> FDNY team was nice. absolutely not to be played with, man. Shout out to FDNY. There's, I know there's might, a couple senior teams out there floating around. I'm not going to say what senior teams. There's a couple teams out there that played them, and they won't play them again. They're like, nah, we're okay. We'll sit this one. Listen, out. the FDNY hockey team is not to be played with, and I think they're playing. Uh, I think they're playing the NYPD again very soon. I got to tell you, man, uh, respect to both first responding teams, but that FDNY team is not to be played with, man. Right. And uh, shout out to our guys, Perretta out there and all the all the boys out there. Um, but listen, man, did you know, we, we're talking about Matt Rempe. I feel like we talk about him almost every episode. I feel like the hockey world has been talking about him. Hockey fight fans have been talking about him. But have you seen our boy Ryan Reeves the past month, the yeah, past few weeks? Yeah, a couple beatdowns out there, yeah. You know, they say in life competition is good, right? Especially for the consumer, especially for the audience. Um, I felt like wrestling was at its prime when WWF had competition with WCW. Yeah. It just brings something out of people. Ryan Reeves, okay, has been long known the past few years. Uh, you know, he's one of the top, if not the top guys. I know he's he's another guy that people debate about yeah. all the time. There, people it, love him. He's going to be polar. Any anybody in that role is polarizing. You know, he he is a super polarizing figure in the world of hockey and hockey fights yeah. more specifically. People love him. People hate him. But yeah. that's why he's who he is. And I got to tell you something, man. He's starting April out with a bang. Okay. He had two beatdowns in a row, okay, in a span of three days. He fought Tanner Janot and then the Michael Pizzetta kid from Montreal. And I got to tell you something. I don't know if he's feeling like, hey, you know what? I'm still here. I'm the vet. Yeah, I still course. got the crown. Of I mean, um, he Rempe cannot. woke up the whole league. He, he really did. That's what I'm saying. Like he's, I guarantee no, he's I, got that in the back of his head. He's like, I got to remind everyone why I'm the guy. Dude, 100%. And, and I re actually reviewed the fight he had with Tanner Janot. Go to at DB Trashers on Instagram. He put on, it was almost like a Floyd Mayweather type of clinic, okay? His head movement is ridiculous. He's got great defense. But his power, I mean, he's got, I don't know, he makes it look so easy. So you know, like, you know. He fight his, I like his fighting style. So, like, you know, you know how, like, I have, like, six different styles that I'll kind of mix and match with. But, like. He kind of just uses his one like counter punching style that he always does. He'll kind of just wait on the guy to throw, kind of like catch it with his elbow and then counter. And he throws those hard right hands. I love that fighting style. And I, I, I that's kind of one of my go tos at times, depending on who I'm fighting. But um, I, li I like his fighting style. It's really, it's dangerous, um, especially if you do get caught. You know, if you're throwing these lazy punches and you're leaving your hand out there and he ends up countering you, like, He's throwing hard. When you're throwing, when the guy's put, he's basically waiting for the guy to come at all his momentum. He's completely open. By the time he throws and he times it, he's catching you right on the jaw. And that, it's a dangerous style to fight a guy that's fighting like that. And, you know, most, Listen, most of these guys aren't, aren't handling it the right ways. Well, I got to tell you, you know, you know, and I know hockey fighters, a lot of them, it's a, you know, punch in the face contest. Yeah. And there's a lot of strong guys. Okay. And honestly, you're very similar to Reeves, in my opinion, because yeah. you have power, you have technique, you have defense, you guys have strategy. Yeah. And really, Ryan Reeves, this April, I mean, it's almost like you said. He was like, you know what? I'm tired of hearing about this Matt Rempe. Yeah. Uh, I'm the guy. Yeah. And I tell you, he even, he even had a good fight with Nicholas Delorier. I mean, he absolutely feel. He looks a little rejuvenated up there in Toronto. Yeah, well, I mean, and um I think like I I've I said it I've said it before on the pod like I remember like it was yesterday like obviously you know Sawyer Justin Sawyer and I remember specifically when I fought Sawyer in Rapid City years ago he ends up picking me up at the hotel after in the penalty box he goes what hotel are you staying at? And I don't know if I've told this story before. This is kind of just going to go full circle into what I think is going on with Rampe too which is great. But so I, I fight Sawyer. We go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. We're in the penalty box, and he gives me respect. He's the OG. I'm the young guy. I'm, I'm, I think I was like 22 at the time. He's six foot six. You know, we're obviously buddies now, but, um, you know, I didn't really know him much at the time. We had mutual friends. That's about it. And uh, 
we're in the box and he goes, boy, Ames, good job, kid, you know? And he goes, what hotel are you staying at? I'm like, oh, I'm just over here across the street, you know? And he goes, okay, okay. And then I didn't hear anything from him about that. And, and then uh, after the game, we get off the bus and we're walking into the hotel and I hear, Ames, like he's got a really deep voice, you know? Song. Yeah, he does. He's just this small, he's in a little car and he goes, Ames, he could probably s- stick both of his arms out both windows at the same time in the car. <laughs> and he goes, hey, let's go, you're coming with me. And I'm looking over, I'm like, is that Sawyer? I just fought this guy. And the guys on the team are like, you're going to go with that guy? You just fought him. And I'm like, yeah, I'm going to hop in the car with him. I'll see you guys later. So I hop in the car with him after we fought, and he takes me over to his house. His girlfriend at the time makes us dinner. We sit there, and we have a beer, and he gives me this talking to, like, hey, hey, like, it's our duty to keep each other employed. When we play, we fight. We keep each other employed when we play, you know, we mix things up a little bit, keep each other employed. And he's like, it's kind of, we're all doing each other a favor by playing a certain way. And, uh, and it's it just something that stuck with me. And it's just kind of, you know, I don't, you obviously don't see it as much as it was, you know, back then in the central league days, everyone was really kind of doing it. And it was everybody doing each other a favor when you got guys like that running around and, and mixing things up and, and it does create a demand and you see what Rempe has done. Uh, everybody's salary that is in that role is going up. I guarantee it. Yeah. Anybody that's signing this upcoming season in that tough guy role, they're going to get a little bit more because, because Rempe's mixing things up and everybody's throwing, you know, at, there's, there's going to be more jobs available. Like you're going to see it. The, the switch is on. I've been saying it for years now. The, the pendulum is going to swing and it, and it went that way for a bit and there you didn't see it too much. And it, the swing is on, it's coming back. Uh, and I, and I, you know, you see guys like Reeves, Reeves is woken up. All these guys around the league are fighting. I absolutely love to see it, and I got to tip my hat to Rempe for for stirring it up, mixing it up a little bit, and kind of waking these guys up. I love it. 100, 100%. You just hit it on the head. The camaraderie, the brotherhood of of that role, people just don't – they just don't get it. and um, But, yeah, I tell you, Ryan Reeves has been on a tear. I feel, I'm like, you know, we got to shout him out because, you know, he's an OG in the game now, and, and he's really, you know, he seems rejuvenated right now. And uh, you it. know what? You see Toronto now, they know that big dog's on the bench. You you see yeah. it, man. I'm telling you, yeah. uh, we're going to see what happens. So, yeah, big shout-out to all the all the guys still doing their thing. And big shout-out to Justin he's, Sawyer. He's, he's, yeah, shout-out to Saw. Saw's a, Saw's a beauty. I love Saw. He's such a good dude. Um, I mean, you got to meet him through Ice Wars. I obviously knew him from before, but uh, love yeah. connecting with Sawyer. He's a, he's a big, strong man with big hands and a big head. <laughs> I remember Very strong. When, when we were at Ice Wars, the first one, and, like, my mom and dad, you met my mom and dad. My mom and dad were there, and my mom's, like, just, just like what am i doing here you know what i mean i'm gonna watch my son fight these guys and she's meeting all the guys like we hadn't fought yet and she's meeting all these guys and sawyer comes and sawyer's like oh hey how you doing miss amesbury and shakes her hand and she looks at me and you should have seen the look in my mom's eyes she's like you're gonna have to fight that guy you're gonna fight that (laughs) she was you're gonna have to fight that man i'm like yeah mom don't worry it's fine i fought him before she's like he's huge (laughs) she's like she's like all these guys are huge but uh, shout no. out to Sawyer. He's a gentle giant. Really good. He's a great fighter. Uh, oh man! You know he, man. He was a problem. He was a problem. Still is. A he problem. was. He He's was a big, strong guy, man. He is a monster yeah. for sure. I can, I so can honestly sh- say, if I didn't come into that as trained up and in, in as good a shape as I as I was, I probably would have had a lot more of a problem with Saw. If if Sawyer was able to put as much time and energy into that camp that I was able to put in, uh, he would have been a problem for me as well. But he's big, he's strong, and he has reps. That guy's been in hundreds and hundreds of hockey fights. Um, shout out he, to Justin he is, Sawyer. He's definitely a beast. So definitely a world of hockey. Things are getting interesting to say the least and like i said maybe we'll see some more brawls as you know maybe it's the spring cleaning uh, uh you know mindset with a lot of these teams so like leaving it all in the spring and going into the playoffs clean so uh yeah. listen man <clears throat> let's get into our quickly our, our free for all our free for all segment i love this segment talk about a little bit about everything i don't know if you did but you know last weekend was basically a holiday for me wrestlemania, <laughs> WrestleMania. weekend yeah dude arguably Arguably the best WrestleMania I've ever seen. I heard and, the ratings uh, were just absolutely off the charts. Like you, the ticket sales were insane. You, well, I remember I was talking to you. You're like, I can't even get tickets for this thing, dude. It, listen, uh, like I said, it's it, at this point WrestleMania is an all weekend thing. Okay, it's a two night affair. It's actually three shows. So we had NXT stand and deliver. Shout out to my boy Tony D'Angelo. 
I came up a little short for the NXT uh, World Championship, but he's going to get back, man. He put on arguably the match of the of the card at Stand and Deliver. So big shout out to Tony D'Angelo, the family, uh, Stax Lorenzo, Luca Christoph. Oh, God, I'm going to say his name wrong. The new consigliere, Luca, and of course, um, Riz Rizzo over there. So big shout out to the family. But WrestleMania, man, was was off the charts. Um, the Rock was involved. The The main event of Sunday night, Undertaker showed up. John Undertaker Cena showed, showed up. up. Yeah, that's unreal. Dude, it was like a it was like a fantasy. It was like it was like my my wife Kim, Kim was like, "What is wrong with you?" I'm like, "I can't help it. I just I just love this stuff, man." <laughs> You're so like a kid, I love it. I dude, you know what, man? It, having something like that is medicine. You know what I mean? Something that you absolutely love and you're that passionate about, I love it. I actually am kind of rattled I missed it because um, you were giving me a heads up about it. And I, I was saying, like, oh, The Rock's in it. I'm, I'm tuning in if The Rock's in. And then I heard The Undertaker dude. came. I'm like, oh, my God. Where's Stone Cold? We need Stone Cold. He, yeah, Listen, WWE right now, you talk about the flow state, right? You talk about just getting – they are in such a groove right now. Like I said a few episodes ago, this era that we're in with wrestling – might be the second coming of the attitude era right. from the you know late 90s it is unreal what's going on the product is better than ever um i just love it man i can't like you said man it's 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 like my comfort it's like comfort food right i just it's just my comfort zone man i'm just absolutely loving where wrestling's going um you know it's kind of like, so big shout out to wwe did, did always you, doing their thing i know you were not a wc wcw guy i know that for a fact right that was like your arch nemesis but do you remember yes. master p in wcw oh dude of course remember listen that? listen one know, thing it's, you know it's that kinda, master p played pro basketball in fort wayne he was no joke, Master P. He played, I heard. He, he played would, basketball for so Scott Sprout. I was ju the, the only reason I mentioned this. I was just in one of our owner and the, one of the guys that runs the team. He, I was just in his office before talking, just just BSing, and we were talking about WrestleMania. And then he was talking about. He's like, "Oh, you know, like my buddy Master P." And I'm like, "What do you mean, your buddy Master P? Like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Master P is the best." And he, and we were talking about that, and he's like, "Yeah, he used to play for my basketball team here." at the Coliseum and I'm like no way wow. and then he reminded me about the when Master P was in WCW and I mean that was in my wrestling days that was when I watched you know wrestling and stuff listen the, the WCW was like the Rangers to me yeah. I, I didn't I didn't I didn't like them yeah. but I paid attention to what well, was going on in man. No Limit Soldiers how do you not tune in <laughs> yeah, man. So, so Fort Wayne at one point, everyone was probably like, "Make them say, oh." Uh. <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> everybody he told me they were so, the first time that he came out for practice. They didn't tell anybody about it, and then he ends up showing up for practice. And they said one person told their buddy, the next person, next thing you know, they had two thousand people at practice. And then Master oh, P Security was like, "We got to get this guy out of here." Like, like literally, they were worried because at the time, Master P just stole Snoop Dogg from Death Row. So they, mm. so they were worried about some beef and stuff like that. So they're like, we got to get him out of here. And they're all freaking out. And they had to sneak him out of there. Um, crazy, crazy, crazy time. Shout out to Death Row. My boy, Mercules is on Death Row. Snoop Dogg. Mercules. Yeah, shout out to Mercules. Mercules. Always, always a big supporter. Yeah. I know he's he's a great guy. But yeah. man, that's that's a crazy story. Yeah. I, I know Master P could ball. I heard yeah. that about him. Yeah. He could definitely ball. So shout out to Master P. Fort Wayne. Make him say, uh. And uh, <laughs> listen, man, you know, talking about... Uh, you know something a little different, man. I don't know if you heard about it, and I'm kind of I'm kind of confused why it's so under the radar. I, I don't know if maybe it was like this on purpose, but Danbury, bro, there is a brand new starting next year. There is a brand new arena football league coming right. to the Danbury Arena, the Entertainment Football Association, the EFA. I think it's called. Nice. Um, follow them on Instagram. We'll, we'll put the we'll put the links in the description on Instagram. It's at E N T F L A. What's their team name? So, so yet? that's the thing. We we don't know yet. They're doing um. So so I, I was learning a little bit about this because my wife Kim, who um, you know, does a lot of party decor. She does crazy stuff with the balloons and stuff. She got hired to do the opening press conference last week for this league, um, just kind of announcing it's coming to Danbury. Danbury is the first franchise they're announcing, and it's going to be at the arena. You know, Herm was there at the press conference. So big shout out to the Entertainment Football Association. Uh, you know, Danbury's starting, to, Danbury's starting to bring some different stuff, man, which I which I love. 
and um, you know, football is big and, and arena football is fun. So yeah. we might have to we might have to start covering them a little bit. Hopefully next year when they get going. Um, let's see what they come so up when with. When does a name. that run? Big, is that in the summertime or is that in the winter time? Or? I, I I I don't know to be honest with you. I literally just kind of finding out about it. I feel like it's after the hat trick season. Yeah. Um, but I don't have crazy details about it. Um, but I know one of the one of the guys involved is a Hall of Fame football player, Andre Reed, ex wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills. So you know this thing looks like it's going to be pretty big, man. Cool. So shout out to the Entertainment Football Association coming to Danbury. I'm definitely looking forward to getting them going. Maybe we'll have to maybe get you a tryout, man. Dude, you want to play football, maybe? In. Yeah, at the very least, I want to get a tryout for sure. I wanna, Diamond I wanna, hands. I'm on D though. I want to lay some guys out. Back on. Back in the Danbury Arena, maybe as a football player. Dude, Dan, remember, Diamond Hands Damon. I don't know if I said it on the podcast, but I'm sure I've said it to you. And I'm like, I have to play a full contact game of football at some point in my life because I've never done that. And I've always been rattled about it because I wanted to play when I was young. And my dad's like, there's no chance I'm letting you play football. And then I actually transferred high schools to a brand new school when I was in grade 10, or I was going into grade 10, grade 9 to grade 10, went to a brand new high school because they said they were going to have a football team. And I'm like, well, my dad can't stop me if I'm playing this on the school team. <laughs> and I transferred yeah. to this school just to play on the high school football team. I left the, the best uh, rugby team in the province to go to this new school. And they didn't have a football team until after I graduated, of course. Well, listen, we might have to talk, uh, you know, we might have to talk to this league and, and get you a tryout. I think we could definitely make it happen. Could you imagine Diamond Hands back at the Danbury Arena, not with a stick, yes. but running the ball or, or totally playing linebacker? I am board with that. I would love that. I don't know about running the ball, though. I'm more – actually, I think arena football, you probably play both ways. So I'll do whatever they yeah. want me to do. But um, – yeah, man, I would love to so, play football. That'd be awesome. Yeah, man, shout out. At least shout get a out to the, Give me a tryout. Yeah, we're going to make it happen, yeah. man. Shout out to the Entertainment Football Association coming to Danbury next year. Definitely going to um, talk more about them when we get more info. It's, it's kind of a little under the radar, but shout out to them. And uh, listen, another shout out. One of my favorite guys met. Thankfully, because of you and through this podcast, our boy Tony at Summit City Bullets. Yes. What a guy, man. He is he is um such a big supporter of the podcast and um big shout out to Summit City Bullets. He, he Listen, told me he got his hands on that trashers jersey, eh? <clears throat> Yes, he yes. Leveraged, he, um, he leveraged me, but you know what? It was I knew I was like, hey, hey this guy supports us. Uh, if anybody's gonna get this thing off my hands, it's gonna be him. And listen, he ships. He ships all over. So yeah. go, go to. We'll, we'll we'll drop the link. Um, all your ammo needs. Yeah. Shout out to Summit City Bullets, Tony out there in Fort Wayne. Uh, he 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 told me. You know, we we got to talking, man. He's. I don't know. I mean, I haven't met him in person, but he used to be a big guy, he man. He's brolic. Still, he's still a big guy, but yeah, I think he was a bodybuilder. But he, yeah, he, he, he was. He was tell telling me. He's still, a, he's a big dude still. Like. Oh yeah, man. So shout out to our boy Tony Summit at Summit City. City. Bullets, man. And uh, listen, you know what? You know something? You you know this a little bit about me, Ames. I, I call it how it is, and I'm the first to admit when I make a mistake. I got to apologize to our friends at the Federal Professional Hockey League. Last week, I went on a bit of a tangent about what I was told, them banning the body bag at the Danbury was that, Arena. Was that April Fool's? I'm getting conflicted. Now, listen. Billy McCreary, Coach Billy, actually was the one who put it out on social media. But it was on now, April 2nd. He was it? He posted it on April 2nd. So I started getting an influx after our pod came out that, oh, no, you dope. It, it, that was an April Fool's joke. No, no, ba, it, was ba, 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 ba. it was on April 2nd, though. Hang on. Oh, you got to check that. I'm checking so anyway, right now. Don't worry. So long, long story, if you guys didn't watch last week, I was uh, totally appalled to hear that allegedly the Federal Hockey League um, took away a beautiful, fun, a family fun um, <laughs> item at the Danbury Arena, the body bag that Section 102 started back in the trasher days. April, what does that say? April 2nd. I'll, I'll, I'll share it. April 2nd, breaking news. So uh, you can say it was an April Fool's joke, but... You're supposed to do those on April 1st, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> so now I now I'm even more confused. So yeah. I guess the saga so I guess the controversy continues. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have to figure out if indeed the Federal League did ban the lovable body bag from Danbury Hockey or it was an April 2nd oh, fools joke first coach. First comment, the best thing. <laughs> 
Shout out Peach Wave. First comment, uh, Patricia Patricia from Peach Wave says, April Fools was yesterday. <laughs> oh but, man. But but so, I I commented because I I actually because it was on April 2nd, I thought it was I double checked. I'm like, okay, it's not April Fools. It has to be real. Who's gonna make an April Fools joke the day after April Fools? Obviously it's real. So I even commented on I, it. I I am totally confused now. Yeah. I was here. I was so let me let me pause. I'm gonna put a pause on my apology to the Federal Hockey League until we get <laughs> until we get con- confirmation. That is really strange. And shout <laughs> out to Coach Billy playing mind games. If that was an April Fool's joke, I I think it was. Listen, I'm very vigilant on April Fool's Day. Yeah. You know, I'm very so he vigilant. Until everybody's guards were down. So so I don't know. Well, uh, now I'm confused. If so that's I'm the gonna case, put up. Can still crack April Fool's jokes then. Like, we, yeah, we, well, we, listen, I'm going to put a freeze on my apologies to the Federal Hockey League. I, you, you have my word. I will get to the bottom of this. So <laughs> I don't know. Let me let me find out April what's second, going on April here. Uh, listen, hey, listen, speaking of, you know, we just talked about the Danbury Arena. Listen, June 22nd, Champs Boxing Club, we always host a Summer Sizzler. I can't believe this is going to be Summer Sizzler 6, okay? Wow. Great night of amateur boxing. We have some of the best amateur boxing uh, of the summer from all what's over, man. People are starting. June twenty second. Um, l- listen, we we got we got teams coming in from all over at this point. It used to be just like the tri state area. Now we get we get inquiries from Baltimore, DC, people coming from all over. So come out June twenty second for the Summer Sizzler. That's like our WrestleMania, Summer Sizzler six. So we're starting to get primed for that. We're still a little while away, but I'm looking forward. Now you know that's a full time job putting this show together. Okay. So definitely gonna have some some updates on that as we go. What about you, Amesy? Any plugs, anything before we uh, wrap up here? No, how's, how's it? Uh, Just shouting out, uh, you know, the same same as usual, Summit City Bullets, obviously. And uh, yeah. yeah, man. And Still guys, using my Roll Recovery roller. Uh, yes. Roll Recovery is the, the best. They got all the, all the products for your recovery needs as well. And listen, guys, a lot of people have been hitting me up. How do we watch Fort Wayne Comets games? You got to go on to, I think it's Flow Sports, but they got like a hockey tab or whatever. You guys got to, listen, you got to watch this Comet team. You got to watch Diamond Hands, you know, make this playoff run. Uh, you know, you got to go to, I think it's Flow Hockey, Flow Sports, something like Flow that. Sports, I know it's I Flow Hot. Ha- yeah, so you guys got to check it out. Um, Danbury Hattrick's playoff tickets are coming out soon. I think they're out already. So lots of fun stuff coming up. Amesy, next episode, I think we got to start making our NHL playoff predictions. Yeah. I think the playoff picture will be a lot clearer by then. And again, guys, go to www.biosteel.com slash dbtrash for your 20% off. I'm telling you, um, we are Team Biosteel. Shout out to the team over there. And uh, yeah, man, listen, episode 18 down, man. We're 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 moving, man. Yeah. We're starting to we're starting to find a groove again. And uh listen, man, miss your brother. Definitely looking forward to um seeing you soon. And guys, make sure you like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and uh we'll see you next time. 